Welcome back to our video module on forced harmonic motion. Let's pick up where we left off. So let's move on to our next example. Let's have some fun with this. So some trouble starter somewhere takes a look at this equation and starts scratching her head. She looks at this and sees that let's make an undamped system. So let's take B out of the equation. All right. So now down here in the denominator, remember this is your total amplitude for a particular solution of a driven force. All you have is this 1 minus alpha squared over k over m. What would happen if I made alpha squared equal to k over m? You also know that the resonant frequency squared is k over m. So what happens if I'm driving this at the resonant frequency? In that case I have a 1 minus a 1. I have a 0 in the denominator. An infinite response. Well is that what happens? And well, mathematically, yes it is. Let's take a look at that. We can call this scenario number seven. We have no damping. So uh, we'll say B equals zero and alpha equals omega naught. And what we see is something like this. And in fact, the amplitude of this gets bigger and bigger and bigger, quite frankly, until something breaks. Let's take a look at this in action. But if I figure out that what's called the natural frequency, this is this cosine, the square root of k out of our mt, this oscillates. And if I've moved my hand up and down at that frequency, I barely have to move my hand up and down. And after a while, I get big motions there. Now, of course, we know enough to know that all systems have some sort of damping. So you're going to have some term right here, no matter what. Well, what if that same trickster decided that they're going to change alpha in such a way that it makes this denominator, this denominator down here, makes it as small as possible. We're going to optimize alpha to make this as small as possible. Well, what we see then is that we are going to get a really large response. And in fact, it grows and grows until this B term becomes significant. So as it grows, you can imagine the velocities as the system is trying to get back to its um, back to zero are going to get larger and larger, which means that the influence of the damping is going to increase. What we'll see is something that looks like this. Let's take a look at a computer simulation of this happening. As a reminder, B is small, and we're going to drive this at a frequency that makes that C as large as possible, kind of optimizes it. This is the resonant frequency. Now let's play with this a little bit more. And if we do, we come up with scenario nine. This isn't something that we're going to see mathematically right now, but it's a lot of fun to see in action. We're going to apply some sort of driving force, and it's going to be close to the resonant frequency, but it's not going to be the same. It's going to start off with its amplitude getting really big, and then it's going to get smaller and bigger and smaller. Let's see if we can write some guidelines here and take a look at So this is what we'd see. Let's take a look at a computer simulation of this phenomena. What happens is if you just look for a small amount of time, it looks like resonance, and then it gets all eaten up again, and then comes back and gets all eaten up again. So what we see is that we have some sort of increasing right here. Let's let's change to red so we can see it more easily. We have some sort of increasing amplitude. And then for some reason, the driving and the system start fighting each other. And I should also point out that in this case, we need to make sure that B is uh, we'll say there's no damping now because they're fighting each other at first, the driving 
frequency is increasing the amplitude. Remember, it's pretty close to the resonant frequency. However, then around here, a phase change happens. And instead of the driving frequency helping, the driving frequency is now fighting. And because it's fighting it a little bit and then fighting it more and more, and it's fighting it, fighting the amplitude of the system frequency really, really close, it fights it really, really powerfully. So powerfully, in fact, that a little bit of time later, the amplitude is almost to zero. And then this system, it happens again, and it continues for time. These are called beats. And you can experience, if you've been in music, you can experience this phenomenon. So in summary, we've been able to use our free body diagram to set up an equation that models sinusoidal forcing on a mass spring dash pot system. We're able to use what we know about homogeneous and particular solutions to identify a, solu a full solution as a function of time. And then we were able to take a look at a bunch of different scenarios. So hopefully today we've gotten a little bit of a grasp of some of the basics of how this system works. On our next couple video modules, we're going to play around with it and feel a little bit more of the texture to see how this works. I hope to see you then.